All right. In Palm Beach. Yes. How'd you know? <laughs> they just told me. Oh. I have a good friend that lives up there. I forgot to call. It's been an hour. About that. Yeah. I, I come from Delray. It's like a, you know one. I, the only thing I don't like about Miami Film Festival is the drive and paying for parking. <laughs> <laughs> I think BK's was up there. Was BK restaurant up there? B-I-C-E? I That's where I think I used to eat all the time. I think that's where that's probably not the place. Okay. Um, well, I had to miss something. Um, I have not heard of you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Good. I, I'm I, glad. Okay. <laughs> um, I am an Alice Cooper fan, but Shep Gordon was a name I, I did not know. However, after seeing Shep Superman, the legend of Shep Gordon, I thought to myself, oh my god, I'm interviewing Shep Gordon! <laughs> <laughs> Were you there last night? I, I had a screener. Great. Yeah. So Mike did a great job. He did. Yeah. Um, what was your initial reaction when Mike Myers shared with you that he wanted to do a documentary about your life? Uh, no. The answer was a very fast no um, for about five years. And then I had some uh, little medical condition. And at that moment, I sort of changed my mind and said yes. I don't know what happened. I thought I had some stomach surgery, but it might have been an ego inflation. <laughs> Uh, but I'm glad I did it. It's a uh, really wonderful piece, and people seem to really be personalizing it and taking things out of it that are wonderful. That's great. I'm usually, and you're talking to someone who usually does not like documentaries, so yeah. I really yeah. like this one. Um, Thank you. Sure. I'm going to turn around other places now. Um, no matter who you're managing, what's the most difficult aspect of a manager's job? I think every artist is very unique and different. I mean, it's not a job that. Um, I guess in some ways, and I don't mean this arrogantly, it's like a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, there are some acts, in the case of Alice, I help him write the shows. I um, never miss a rehearsal, um, because that's what I do. Um, I stay with the show until it's working. And then I leave, I may leave for a year, I may not see the show again for another oh. year, a year and a half, because my job is to make sure the show is right for him. Mm -hmm. um, Luther Vandross, would not let me come to a show until he had it perfect. So I could never come to a rehearsal. I couldn't come to opening nights. He wanted it to be broken in. Once he was playing for a couple of weeks and he felt good, then I could come and see it. So it's, it would be like a doctor who, you know, some people have a bad call, but some don't. You fix what needs fixing and move on. And that's it's very, very personal, very individual. I think the stereotype for the manager is he's the guy who gets the Coca-Cola. <laughs> and in some cases, that's really all an artist one. Um, but each one very different. Okay. Um, is there anything easy? Like what's the easiest thing about being a manager? Um, access. If the artist is really big and being a plus one, you have access without notoriety, which is really nice and easy. And always can get good seats. <laughs> okay, good. Um, um, were you aware of who Mike was talking to when you made the film and or and or what they were saying about you during the making? No, I had no nothing to do with the process at all. I did my interviews and stayed out of the way. Yep. Uh, well, no matter who you are, it has, to, it has to really melt your heart when you hear so many people speak so highly of you. Yeah, very humbling. It's really beautiful. Makes me feel really good. Um, what did you think after the fir very first time you saw the movie? Um, I was really, for the first time I saw it, I saw it alone. I was a little worried about showing it to my kids. Um, it showed things that I never really told them about me. Uh, I was very humbled by my friends in it. Um, I really didn't know why other people would want to see it. Um, and I was very embarrassed by the name. Um, Superman? Superman and The Legend of Chef Gordon. It just didn't fit into my profile of myself. But after I saw it with an audience in Toronto and read the reviews and saw what people were taking from it, I got really proud of it and happy about it. Um, really uh, just humbled is the word to be the centerpiece of it. Yeah. Okay. Usually when, I'm, when I, I associate the word mensch with, it's like giving my, peach, my cheeks really pinched hard. You just thought I'm mensch. That's my impression of a mensch. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I said earlier I was a fan of Alice Cooper, so I'm going to ask some questions about him if that's okay. okay. Um, uh, oh, so much. Okay, uh, these might be the most common questions asked about him. Um, 
I always knew of Alice, but I didn't really get introduced to him until um, Friday the 13th Part 6 came out. Really? Jason Lives, oh, yes. yeah, that's late. And, yeah. he came, and he came out, you know, well, I was a, I was a you know, teenager yeah. at the time, so. Um, and, it, you know, he sent a title song, he's back, The Man Behind the Mask. Uh -huh. uh, do you remember how Alice got involved with the project? Yes. Um, I was, um, I made movies with Wes Craven and John Carpenter, so I was very involved in that genre. And when that came along, I was able to push him into it that he's the perfect fit for you know, all these uh, genre movies. He is the genre master. Right. Um, and they were thrilled to have him. It was just a great union and a great song, I Love Man Behind the Mask, which went to number one in Scandinavia. Right. We have to always put it in the show when we play over in Europe. Yeah, actually, I bought, the constrictor, I, I bought the Constrictor album shortly after that. So I knew Teenage Frankenstein, uh -huh. which I thought was a perfect song to be featured in Wayne's World. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I thought it was great, and it worked. That's yeah, it would work. I don't. Uh, if, he's, if he's saying, cause I saw in the documentary, you know, if he was singing um, 18 or School's Out. I don't think the scene worked as well. So uh -huh. it would work as well. Yeah. You know, That's why I fought for it. And I think Mike in the end agreed too. Okay. Um, he didn't feel compromised. He felt like it was a really good uh, solution, which, which is what I meant in the movie by win-win. Right. -win. You know, we were able to get what we wanted. He was able to get what he wanted. A normal thing like that, it would have been a winner and a loser. It would have been black and white, one or the other, but by putting a little extra time into it, and we were able to make it a winner winner, which is what it should be. I mean, if you only, you know, like talk about this for a few seconds in the movie, because that's all you have time for, but was it a harder fight in real life to get that done? To get in with Vince and have you go listen to the song for it? It was maybe a little more. It was, wasn't easy, but I took a very strong position um, and was able also to get Warner Brothers to agree to include it, as I remember, in a video for the song which meant promotion for the movie. So I was able to bring a nice package together. Yeah, cool. um, I remember seeing an Alice Cooper concert on pay-per-view not long after where um, he said he worked with a stage show. <coughs> I remember, you know, Jason was on the stage yeah. show. He swings a machete, just still misses him. Yeah. Oh, he still does that? Yeah. So, so, you know, so you were, just you know, misses him. Right, yep. You mentioned before, how involved were you putting together his stage shows? Uh, very, so, very involved. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I also like the collaboration between he did and Twisted Sister on the song. Um, that was fun. He truly school yeah. both both of the song and the video. Uh -huh. You know, and, and you know, he's you know always referring to that song almost as a sequel to School's Out. Right. You know, how did Alice get hooked up with uh, those guys? Uh, D called us up. Mm -hmm. Asked us if we wanted to do it. We heard the song. We liked the song. It was in a school somewhere in California, as I remember, where we we were close to, and um, just seemed like a great collaboration. We read the script, loved it, and the director was great. So. I thought it was really cool. Okay. Um, how involved were you with, with Alice's acting career? You mentioned that, actually, I interviewed John Carpenter once, mm -hmm. and you talked about um, Prince of Darkness, and I know Alice was in that, and I remember that, yep. you know, he had that great scene when he said the guy with the bike, yeah. you know, that's really I cool. executive produced that. Yes, yeah. I remember that, I saw that credit, you know, that was really cool shit. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, so when it came to Alice's acting career, how involved what I mean, I was, I'm involved in everything Alice does. I, I wouldn't say he has an acting career. He's never really chosen to develop that as heavily as he should or could. Um, it hasn't held as much interest for him. Uh, he loves that live reaction to an audience. But I've been involved with all the choices that he's made. Do you ever think of doing a theater show? <laughs> um, we have thought about it. We've actually been a fellow working on a script. I think at some point we may do it. Um, the songs are so good. His songs is, I think, the thing that's mostly, most overlooked about Alice is how good his material is and how poignant culturally. When you start listening to those things, they're a complete reflection of our last 30 years on the planet, you know, especially for teenagers. Um, the Only Women Bleed, The I Never Cry, it's, you know, great, great songs that um, on Broadway would have a great, I think, really have a real effect because we're trying. Okay. Um, you also mentioned how, um, you know, I found out, I didn't know this, that, you know, you were on the plane to help inspire that scene from yes. uh, <laughs> Almost Famous. Yeah. Um, a couple of questions about that. First, um, do you remember your, any impressions you had of Cameron Crowe back at that age? Cameron was fairly famous in, in um, a very small rock and roll circle because he was maybe 16 or 17. And the first story he did was on dead rock and roll artists. I think he did it for Rolling Stone. And there was a PR company called Gibson and Stromberg that were really promoting him heavily. So he was a little bit of a hero to everybody here. And um, he was on the flight when it happened, which was so amazing. <laughs> and then we saw it in the, in the movie. 
Did, did you know that, no. about it? No, I didn't know he was going to do it. But you know happy you, he did. You remember your reaction when you saw that scene? Yeah, I remember. I called up. I was like, holy shit, that's in this movie. <laughs> yeah. you, I, mean, I, 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 I thought it was funny, the story about the guy saying, you know, I'm the one who really impregnated you. Why uh-huh. that? Uh, do you recall what you were doing when the plane detector was going down? Yeah, we were playing poker. And we upped the stakes to unlimited stakes because we really thought we were going down. The, uh, the guy was, um, we called him Elton Jew. He was the bookkeeper. And um, Jay Benson was his name. And he just found out his wife was pregnant. And, uh, so, hey, Elton, it's my baby. <laughs> Space Latanzi was the guy who stood up. Um, let's go back to Superman. Um, you can go online. Okay. Um, you opening film is a shot of you alone. The, um, the music is kind of dreary, too. Mm-hmm. We see it. And, and the movie ends that way, that way, too, with you alone. And you obviously have so many people that love and care about you, but in the end, you're alone. What are your thoughts on that? No, no, I try not to think about it. Too much. Okay. I just sort of wake up and do what I do and then go to sleep. Okay. So I don't really... I've, the movie's made me think about it. But I've been moving so fast I haven't really had time, but I'm sure I'll have strong reflections on it. Um, on a lighter note, I know this, um, what do you think of all those reenactment scenes in the movie? I love how he might go to I think it's really fun. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't met the archive. actor yet. I want to meet the actor. Um, I haven't met him. But I hear, uh, hear he's a very nice guy. Someone in South by Southwest the other day was telling me about him. Matt, I think is his name, Matt Sweeney. Yes. Yeah. Um, finally, if we want to wrap up. Um, I love finding out how you created so much buzz for the shows, like calling the police on Alice. The billboard sign breaking down in London. Um, if social media was around back then the way it is today, uh, what do you imagine some of the things you might have done to get out and the other bands and people you manage notoriety? You know, I don't know. I don't know if it would be easier or harder. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a real expert on social media, but I know it's different. Because now you can get your story out without having people collaborate with you. In those days, you needed the TV stations, the newspapers to tell your story. Now you don't need them to tell your story. But also I think harder to get to a mass audience because everybody's fragmented. You knew in those days that if you got a daily newspaper you hit 30% of your audience. If you got a TV station you hit a big part of your audience. Now I don't know what it means. I just, I'm not an expert on it. Last statement. I felt a real connection with your film. Um, we're both Jewish boys from Long Island. Mm-hmm. I grew up in Glen Cove. We went by, I went to um, what school of state? I went to Ithaca. Oh, really? Um, yeah. yes. My brother went to Cornell. Yeah. Okay, you're right next door. Mm-hmm. Um, we both have a similar laugh. I can't make mine, but I have, that <laughs> <laughs> I have the same one. And unfortunately, we probably have the same scar across our tummies. Yeah, exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, they took out four feet of mine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I had a great Cancer connection. or? Um, inflamed. The walls were, now yeah. that, my, yeah. both of my sets were that big, they said it was weird as the chromes. Um, but, um, so I worked with, you know, so I worked with like, a, a connection, that was, I almost like, felt like a connection to a man I never met before. Right. I had but so that's, that's what I was saying, if so many people are finding things in it, they, after I saw it with an audience, I became really comfortable with it, because exactly that reaction is from so many people, where they're finding something in it to hold on to in their life, uh, which is great. Okay, that's my question. I can tell you, my question was going to but you just answered, you know, what do you want people to like, walk away with it. They yeah. see the film, but you just said it. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Great. All right, great, sir. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you. Hello. Hello.